Okay, so a little while ago, I made six of the world's weirdest mushrooms into miniatures. And all of you really seemed to enjoy that because I asked you and you told me what to do. And you also liked what we came up with. So today over on my Instagram, I decided to ask you guys what your favorite cool, weird animals are so I can shrink them down and make them frown. Cause that's my brand, <laughs> tiny and sad. Let's see what you all had to say. I really hope that you guys didn't send me anything gross. I don't know how I'm gonna do anything gooey. I say that now and I'll probably just disappointed if there's like not anything ugly. <laughs> I am immediately seeing <gasps> so many platypus. Everyone's like, platypus, give me a platypus. There's one person in here <laughs> that's like, cows, my lord. And actually there's more than one person. <gasps> Don't judge me. <laughs> I was hoping someone would say this. Blobfish, blob, blobfish. Bring out the blobfish. When I said I didn't want gooey, I was lying because I wanted this. No one thinks of Mr. Blobfish except for us today. I've got to whisper this one because my husband is listening. I don't want him to know that I'm going to do this for him. What is a nudie branch? I'm gonna look it up. If I put in nudie branch and then my search terms are all messed up and I start getting weird things, I'm not gonna be too happy. <gasps> it's a little sea swag, baby. That's a very cute little baby. Oh, and there's so many color options. There are different people asking for this. They are calling it like a sea bunny or a sea slug. Is this real? Is the sparkle muffin spider real? It's real. This thing is legit. Look at him, with his little hands up. He's like, hey girl, hey. <laughs> Come hang with me. <laughs> Let's be friends, little spider. That was a good suggestion. Who suggested that? Sunday. Thanks, Sunday. That was such a great suggestion. I want to make a flamingo. I don't need to explain myself. I'm going to do this in ascending order of difficulty, so we're going to do the easiest ones first. Let's go get weird. I almost knocked over all my lights. So the general vibe that I'm getting from the platypus after looking at a couple of pictures is that when they are on land, they are very flat. He's a very flat bean. And gravity is putting a lot of pressure on him. So I would really like to embody that. So I think what I'm gonna do is he's gonna be splayed out, trying to do his best as we all are at some point during the day. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that insurance frog squirrel, but they look exactly like the insurance frog squirrel. That makes my day. <laughs> So a little bit of a tip, when you've just freshly blended some clay together, you wanna let it rest or cool for a little while before you start working with it again. So I'm gonna pop this into the freezer just so that it can settle and harden up. Once our custom color had had a little bit of time to settle, I made our bills and then got the eyes ready because they needed to go in first. I'm flat. Leave me alone. I also gave our platypus a little bit of webbing inside of their fingers and feetsies and some little tufts just to show where the edge of their fur would be. They also have a very distinctly shaped bill and I tried to do my best to replicate it. For the fur of the platypus, instead of individually sculpting all the hairs and ruining the texture of our finished product, I opted for a little bit of paint in some darker and lighter tones to make it look like it was wet and it had just come out of the water. I'm very excited for the blobfish. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. This is a picture. <laughs> you would think that this would be really simple, but sometimes the things that look the most simple are the most complicated. He's got a lot of wrinkles. I had this friend once and she always said that when she was drawing something, she was making the same face as what she was drawing. Maybe the whole time I'm gonna be sculpting the blobfish, I'm gonna look like this. I want to apologize in advance for what is about to happen because I was unable to control myself while sculpting these. feel like the eyes are more on the side of the head so I'm gonna move them oh yeah over there is better <laughs> it kind of looks like Squidward like no joke the eyes are not wrinkly enough I need more wrinklies This is the most cursed thing I've ever made, and I'm not even done. It's awesome. Now one of the things about the blobfish is that you need to ensure that it is in fact blobby and smooth, so I used a little bit of acetone over the tops of them before I put them in the oven just to make sure that they were extra slimy and disgusting. To really bring home the fleshy effect, I also decided that I was going to be shading this before baking with a little bit of eyeshadow and some blush. 
Because let's be honest, these need to look like a human just took off their skin and left it somewhere in a pile. Actually, after chatting to a couple of my friends, we decided that these look like raw turkeys, which is perfect for this time of year. It's blobfish, that's what's for Thanksgiving dinner. Now, so everybody could tell that I was in fact making the capybara, I did decide that I was going to make some miniature oranges for on top of its head because that's kind of its brand. Thank you. Someone just bought a little something from the shop. And every time I get a sale, I say thank you. So if you ever make a purchase from my store, you can imagine me saying thank you. I'm really grateful for you guys. If you feel like supporting my videos, that is a great way to do it. To get our oranges to look as realistic as possible, I used a dotting tool to give them that porous texture. And I also used a little bit of green polymer clay to give them that little flower top. I popped our oranges in the oven so that they could harden up and I'd be able to press them onto the heads of the capybars without them getting smushed. Once the oranges had hardened up, I put them onto the blobby shape that I had made for the capybara before I made him some little legs. I popped in the eyes and then I made some tiny little ears to go on either side of the orange so that they were perked up and he was looking interested in what I had to say. For smoothing out blunt edges like this, I particularly enjoy using this silicone tool. It makes everything look seamless because it kind of acts like a really tiny finger. As creepy as that sounds, it works very well. For the finishing touches on our capybara, I made sure that he had his traditional chill expression and also some indentations in his little paws. And for the final touch, I added a little bit of powder to the snout so that you could tell that it was in fact a snout. I'm about to show my husband the capybara for the first time. Hi baby, do you wanna see something special I made? It's been a while since we've had to do a floor talk with Karis, but I'm sorry, it's time. For those of you that are new to a floor talk with Karis, sometimes we have to get on the floor so that we can talk about our plans. I was not anticipating how intense this week would be, and I'm gonna be real with you guys, the flamingos were a lot more than I could handle. I don't know what I'm doing. No. And I promise that I tried my best. Sometimes you try your best. Sometimes your best looks like gum and bobby pins. I recorded the beginning of this video a few hours before that question was done. I gotta say that I got probably 10 more requests to do cows. So I feel like cows are cool and who... <coughs> Yeah, that exactly. I feel like I'd get really excited to sculpt some miniature udders. There's no shame in saying, can't do it right now. I'll try another day. <laughs> I'm just gonna preface this section by saying I really thought that I was doing the simpler option and something a little bit easier for myself by taking on the cows. In my mind, a couple of white balls stuck together with some legs and a couple udders and a snout, that seems pretty straightforward, right? Oh, how naive and wrong I was. And oh, how weird and uncomfortable things were about to get for me. What I'm about to do may be a little bit controversial, but I want to give them an udder. Because personally, I think that udders are cute. Some people might find them weird, but you clicked on this video and I told you that's what it was going to be. So I'm only giving you what you asked for. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm realizing that udders just kind of look like smooth little stools and I need someone to make an udder chair. I'm gonna bake these before I stick them to the cows so that all of my hard work does not get smushed. Just looking at this is, is making me feel weirdly uncomfortable. Like I don't, I feel unsettled by this object. I'm gonna put the arms and the legs on and see if that helps, but uh, something about it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right someone pointing these udders at me. I've come this far. I guess I'm just gonna commit. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I've been sitting here for the last 20 minutes trying to figure out how I can save these. I understand now why I should not have done this. I was like, I've never seen anyone do them with the udders. There's a reason why, you guys. I'm sorry I'm putting you through this right now. I thought maybe if I kept soldiering forward, things would potentially get better, and they did, thankfully. This is actually kind of cute now. Okay, maybe I don't hate it. I think it's maybe just because the focal point was the udders. It's definitely giving me an interesting optical illusion. <laughs> if you just focus on the pink bits, it's like a weird meat baby or something. Now it's time for some paint and then we will be done. Now that we had managed to finish up all of that utter nonsense, I decided I would immediately clear the air instead of messing around and doing a segue by getting to work on these sparkle muffin spiders. 
Now, I have made spiders before on a larger scale for one of my videos, but I had never done anything this small, so it did take a little bit of trial and error with figuring out how the body was going to look and how I was going to get the wires to work. I cut a bunch of different shapes before aligning them up and figuring out what would get them to balance in that pose we had seen earlier. It was a relatively tricky process with trying to find the shapes that would all fit together as well as holding the right amount of clay, but once I got it right, I used that as the prototype and sort of started a little bit of an assembly line so that I would have all of the right balances of clay to the right shapes in wire so that they could stand up waving their arms in the air. Okay, they are just the skeletons, but I'm already very intimidated. Look at this guy, he's like, no, don't touch me. He said, no, don't touch me. You can't. Oh my god, that one fell over. He was so intimidating. Skeletons are looking pretty good. Now, one of the great things you can do with polymer clay is you can kind of hit the save button by baking everything. So that's exactly what I did before I moved on to making the head and adding the eyes. When you bake in between steps, it means that you can hold on to different places and you're not going to be crushing the soft clay that you're working on. It's a tiny frightened army. <laughs> This was actually the most lengthy part of this video. Covering all of the spider legs in clay and building them up took me almost four hours and I actually didn't notice because I was so into it. Now when it came time to paint the spiders, I was actually incredibly nervous because I had taken so long to make the sculpts. I really didn't want to mess anything up. But in the end, I felt like I was able to make something that I'm really proud of. Okay, so we are specifically moving on to the section now with the sea snails, or as I said earlier, the nudie branch. It's actually not pronounced like that. I have a friend who is a green biologist and I was able to ask her, how do I say this name? It is nudie brink. I will, however, experiment with a little bit of cosplay because it's kind of rubbery and bendy. I've never done it before, so we're trying some new things. Rumbly. So I figured I might as well experiment with that while we are at it. Now, without any further delay, let's get nudie. Having pretty much zero experience with cosplay, one of the things I noticed immediately is that we needed to use a pasta maker to overcome this crumbly texture that we had going on. It took a little bit of work, but I managed to get the pile of all of these crumbs together into these shapes that we could then roll up and make into our little balls that we could use for the base of the nudie brain. I decided that I would make them uniform in some way, so all of them have a little ruffly skirt at the bottom, kind of like a ravioli. I actually don't think that I mentioned this yet, but I decided that I was going to do four different designs for the nudie branks, as if I hadn't already done enough work, but there were just too many for me to be able to decide on doing one. I think the part that I enjoyed the most about sculpting these was the really dramatic tails and how the cosplay allowed me to have this anti-gravitational flow. Sculpey, what I'm used to working with is really heavy and just kind of falls over. This is really springy and stands up on its own. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of with this medium is it is quite sticky and there are a few fingerprints that I'm struggling to get out of it. So maybe there's something I can do after it's baked to get rid of those. I don't have the skill level yet to know how to get rid of them. Okay. Let me see how resistant it is. I don't want to like go too hard and then break it, but yeah, that's pretty great. Oh yeah, I did reef on it and it popped out, but I can super glue that back in place. Before I got to work painting these, I made sure to cover their eyes with a little bit of latex to protect them so that I could peel it off later. I feel like I've only scratched the surface of all of the different types of sea slugs that are out there and I'd really love to do more of these at some point. So if you're interested in seeing that, please let me know in the comments below because let me tell you, these guys were pretty fun to make. And with all of our finishing touches in place, I peeled the latex off of their eyes and it is time for some moody glamour shots, baby. your favorites or least favorites of the day. I hope you guys will let me know in the comments below. My personal fave, I think you could tell, were the nudie branks. I'm not gonna tell you my least favorite because as a clay mama, that's not really fair to my kids. But I think we all know who it was. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider clicking some of the buttons, liking or subscribing. It helps the robot overlords know that you enjoyed what you saw today. And if you feel like supporting my channel, we do have an online shop and I will be having an update on December 8th with some of my worry warts. If you missed this update, please make sure to sign up for my email list and you'll get notified of when we're going to have more. By supporting me there, you help me to continue making more weird and wonderful art like this. 
I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had making it. Remember to be nice to yourself and to persevere through the blobby, nipply mistakes of the day. Okay, I love you. Bye! Someone just called me an animal. That's not an animal.